So now in this video, we're going to use the LM358 dual op amp again. I like this op amp for my circuits because I usually use a 5 volt power supply and it works pretty well with a single 5 volt power supply. And the output can go all the way down to 0 volts, the negative rail, and it can get uh, kind of close to the positive rail. I think about uh, 3.6 volts or something. So not all the way to the positive rail but it does go all the way to the negative rail. So when we use an LED as a load, the output is the top pin there for one of the op amps. And we have a power pin at the very top, but below that, the top pin of this op amp is also the output. We're just gonna use this one here. So we'll put the long lead, the anode to the output, the short lead, the cathode. We're gonna go up one row and then put a resistor to the negative rail so that the LED will light up when the output is higher than 1.6 volts. So now, we want to set a voltage at the inverting input. That's the negative sign when you're looking at a schematic diagram, and we don't want to short circuit this out. I'll uh, push that wire there. Let's move it here and leave one slot there. So this is a 100 kilo ohm resistor and this is also a 100 kilo ohm resistor so we're putting one to the positive rail one to the negative rail that will give us half of the power supply voltage so 2.5 volts going to the inverting input of the op amp and now zooming in we're going to complete the circuit as a comparator non-inverting comparator and so as i said before we set the voltage there using two equal value resistors to half the power supply voltage. I'll turn on the uh, power supply and here we have a trim pot. And so you can see positive comes there, negative comes there. There's a wiper here that goes across the resistive element. So depending on where the wiper is, there'll be some resistance unless we go all the way over to here, then there'll be zero resistance. But there'll be some resistance to the positive rail and some resistance to the negative rail. As long as we don't go all the way to negative, then there'll be zero ohms of resistance. And so we have a variable voltage divider. So you can see at about the halfway point, the power supply is on now, the LED turns on fully when we go above that halfway point and turns off fully when we go below that halfway point. And again, as I mentioned before, the output does not go all the way to the positive rail but it goes all the way to the negative rail so we can turn the LED fully off when we give a low signal there. So right now we have a ton of gain, maybe thousands of times, maybe millions of times. You'd have to look at all the specifics on the uh, data sheet of the op amp and uh, maybe find a way to uh, test that. But in any case, just tons and tons of gain for the voltage we give in if, if it's just uh, slightly higher at any amount really at the non-inverting input the uh, positive symbol when you're looking at a schematic diagram if it's any tiny bit higher than the inverting input then we will get the full output either as much as the transistor can conduct because the gain is so high so we want to taper back some of that gain and we can do that by uh, taking a resistor, this is a 4,700 ohm resistor. By the way, I have a 220 ohm resistor protecting the uh, LED. So, 4,700 ohms, we're going from the output to the inverting input. And now what you're gonna see is that the LED doesn't go from completely off to completely on as we turn the wiper. It is Right now, it is following the uh, voltage that we are setting at the non-inverting input. And that's because of the feedback. Ultimately, what an op amp is trying to do is keep the voltage at uh, the non-inverting input and the inverting input the same. But the only way it can do that is with feedback. And so what it does is it feeds back some of the output in order in this case to hold the voltage at the inverting input the same as the non-inverting input. So now it's always more fun to look at the voltages 
with an oscilloscope than just to look at the LED. And so we'll turn that on. There's a dial here to uh, change some settings. So now we change it to two volts per division, one volts per division. I can adjust that there. So really, most of these have two different changes you can make based on how you press the button. Also, you can press this to uh, speed up the change. I want to leave that there. And if you hold a button down for about two seconds, usually there is another option. And uh, we don't want that up there. And so, right now, I don't know why, I think it's paused. There we go. And at the other end of the cable up here, we have this set to measure DC, is uh, these alligator clips right here. And they have a jumper there. I can just tack that into a slot with uh, both of these. And this one needs to go to the negative rail. Doesn't matter where, as long as it's connected to the negative rail so that we get the voltage in relationship to the power supply. And now, first thing I'm gonna do is remove the feedback resistor, negative feedback resistor at the inverting input. So right there. Now, once uh, I stop uh, bumping things so that we kind of get slight voltage differences, you can see here that right now at the inverting input, the voltage holds steady. So all it's doing now is comparing the voltage, the signal we're giving to the non-inverting input with the inverting input. And when the non-inverting input is higher voltage, you can see we turn to the positive rail, we get a, a full positive output. So now let's add that uh, feedback resistor again. We'll kind of zoom in and uh, so that we can see that a little better. But uh, I'm going to the output, so where the uh, input, or where the uh, LED, I mean, and the output connect. And it's a little tight in here now. There we go. So I got uh, both those, and it's going back to the inverting input. Now when we come back. So, looks like the uh, voltage is in a similar spot, but... We're still measuring the same voltage point, but now we added negative feedback. And so there you can see, basically we added feedback to the inverting input, which is negative. And as I said before, you're going to see that we can get, it looks like about 3.1 volts or something. And uh, it looks like that's, that's about it at uh, that input. But in any case, there you can see, as we give a lower voltage, to the non-inverting input, ultimately we have a lower voltage at the inverting input because we don't just have two fixed resistors now, we have a resistor here that is changing the voltage based on the voltage and the uh, resistance, but uh, this resistor value works pretty well as you can see for this video. It's feeding some of that voltage back to the Non, or to the inverting input and so it's changing the point and ultimately it setting the gain it looks like to one spot on one so whatever voltage we give to the uh, non inverting input it looks like that's pretty much the voltage that will ultimately get to the non inverting input through the feedback and ultimately feedback from the output and so the output is changing the signal to the inverting input and it does whatever it takes to keep the voltages equal between the inverting input and the non-inverting input. So that's why you use negative feedback. Ultimately it tapers down the gain. So we went from gain of thousands to maybe millions to a gain of uh, looks like pretty much spot on one in this case. 